Friday, you guys. Y'all, this week has been... Actually, this week has been fairly good. I will say that, first of all, the past three weeks has been good. I've been good. We've been good. Hope y'all been good. Honestly, I hate coming on. Like, I hate giving the excuse of why I haven't uploaded something because I feel like, okay, Yvette, how many excuses are you going to have? So I really don't have an excuse, you guys. I just didn't record. So... I mean, re honestly, the reason I didn't record is because I always film my episode the Friday before it's supposed to air. And when I was going on vacations, it was like pushing me back to the point where I was recording like the day before Friday. So it just pulled me back. So I just was like, you know what, instead of me trying to upload a video today to have it up today, let me just record a video today and it will be up next week. So... Please don't let my lights go out, y'all. If you watching via video, I don't know if y'all see my lights flickering, but we are currently experiencing Hurricane Ida. I mean, no. What's the name? Ian. <laughs> hurricane Ian. And I don't even know if it's considered a hurricane where I live at. I believe by the time it gets here, it's going to be considered a tropical storm. But that's what we're going through right now. So it's ugly outside. It's gloomy. It's barely any light. So, but the past three weeks, you guys, I mean, I really haven't did anything different. Just been chilling, healing, chilling, and healing. That's it. <laughs> like, it's being a mother, working, yeah, all of those things. So, honestly, I really don't have no update to tell y'all what I've been doing because I really ain't been doing nothing but that. But anywho, so we can just go ahead and get into our first segment which is sweet and sour i'm going to say my sweet is getting my hair dear y'all if you're not watching visually then you can't see my hair but i'm so excited that i got my hair done y'all because listen 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 we have been influenced via social media to be getting wigs just Everything but a traditional sew-in. So I haven't gotten a sew-in in a while, and it just feels so good to have a sew-in. Will my leave-out be fried off by the time I take it out? Nine times out of ten, yeah. But it just feels so good to not have to worry about a wig, a frontal, a lace closure, none of that, or even braids. Like, I mean, I love my braids, but just to have bundles that's sewn into my head, it just feels so good. So that's definitely my sweet because y'all I have been struggling with what to get done to my hair and I just was like you know what I'm going to take the bundles off of a wig and put it on to a sewing so that's what we did um as far as my sour you guys honestly let me tell y'all my growth it literally took me a while to be able to figure out what my sour was because I was like I really don't have no complaints have I went through things these past couple of weeks yes have I cried yes have I had my down days yes am I a cancer yes so <laughs> it just was like I mean it just it wasn't anything abnormal I definitely had my days but in the midst of out of all of that it's still nothing that I could complain about but if I had to pull something out just for the sake of the segment I would definitely say, and I'm pretty sure if you're on social media, you heard people talking about it. But even if you haven't heard about it on social media, I'm pretty sure you might have heard about it just, you know, from life, hearing about it on the news. Personally, I've never heard about it. Um, yeah, a lot of people on social media say I should have heard about it, but I'm like, I never heard about it. So it is the Netflix series Dahmer. You guys, let's just talk about this for a couple of minutes. Y'all, first of all, usually I'm not the one to be, like, moved by, by like, documentaries and stuff like that because I'm just, like, I mean, it is what it is. I really don't try to let it affect my mood too much because there's nothing that I could do about it, you know? Um, but if you have watched this, I don't know anybody that has not had – some type of feelings towards this series. So just to give y'all a little background, it's about a gay white man. This was going on back in the 19, I don't know, 1900s, honey. I don't know what year. But it was about a gay white man that was luring 
um, black men, black gay men, or even he had some Asians. I think he had one white man and he would invite them to come back to his apartment to pay them. I, th- I believe he said like 50 or a hundred dollars to take pictures of them. So I don't know. I mean, it definitely was different times because I'm like, y'all really went, but I mean, it was back in the day. So maybe they just felt differently then. But, like, he would lure lure them back to his apartment and kill them. But, you know, it was was 17 victims. So that's what, like, that and among other things really got me. Because I'm like, 17 victims? You were able to kill 17 victims, and two of them were 14-year-old boys. So 17 victims. And when the police finally caught him... They found skulls in the in the uh, in his like drawers, a head in his refrigerator, hearts in his deep freezer, and torsos in like a big at container filled with acid. He was cutting these people up and eating their body parts. He tried to give his neighbor a sandwich with human meat on it. Niecy Nash played the neighbor and she did an amazing job. Like it's a lot of back and forth on social media about whether or not Netflix should have put out a series like this. And I see it from both point of views. I feel like for, for the sake of the families, you know, this is something that is they're probably trying to put out of their mind, but you know, social media has caught on to it. This is not the first video, I mean, movie or series about it. But this one seems to be really blowing up. And, you know, it's social media, y'all. Like, social media nowadays blows things up, you know. So the families are having to relive these, you know, things that they, these tragic events that they went through. So I can only imagine how they feel. But on the flip side of it, is people like me where I did not know about this going on. And even though I can't change it, it definitely gives an insight and a little background on definitely how it's just sad that he got away with that. And I'm sorry to say, I truly feel like he got away with it because he was a white gay man back then police officers or even a lot of people they weren't used to, you know, it's not like how it is now with the LGBTQ community. Like they were afraid to even touch, be around gay men because they felt like they were going to get something. And then not only that, when it came down to it being a white man, you know, unfortunately we live in a world where sometimes white people have a little bit more privilege than when it comes to a uh, African American or, you know, somebody of color. But I'm really I'm not trying to get into all of the racism and everything like that. But it's just crazy how he got away with doing this to 17 people. It's it's bananas. I just it's just sickening. It's sickening. And then they didn't I didn't hear this in the actual documentary. Well, the series that I was watching. But y'all, I went on. I was reading. You know what I'm saying? Watching videos and stuff. And to this for this man to say that black people meat tastes the best i just just even I, like just it's just nasty it's just nasty it's just tragic it's just all of the above and it's just sad that's all i can say it's sad but you know, if you are interested in watching it, it's on Netflix. If you are not, I completely understand because I've seen some people say that ever since they watch the series, they'll have nightmares. They can't sleep through the night, things like that. And, you know, that hasn't happened for me, but it's definitely, you know, part of my sour segment because if this is something that usually a lot of the times things that may have happened like documentaries that I watch or series that I watch, it don't stick with me, but this has stuck with me. This stuck with me because it's like, how the hell? How? 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 
like one episode was dedicated to him doing these acts to a deaf man and not saying that the deaf man is even more worse than the other man or the 14 year old but it's just like what the hell that's all i can say what the hell like i don't know but anyway okay y'all let's go ahead and get into the topic at hand shall we so on social media there is tweets captions all of that going around of a song that came out and one line in the song says matter of fact i want to make sure i quote it so the song is called back in right and it the the one line that everybody is saying is it's cool when they do it it's a problem when i do it right so (laughs) funny that a man is singing this song very hilarious but um i get what he was saying and i do feel like that (laughs) it is like that's just whether it's a man or a woman or whatever i feel like that is something that just the world we live in it's okay when somebody else do it to you but when you do it to them it's a problem but that statement triggered something else in me that i we gonna talk about today as a woman i never want to come off as being a man basher or anything like that but i do feel like that we live in a society of where men it's considered okay or it's not frowned upon to do certain things but when a woman does it it's a problem and really that was something that prompted me to create my podcast within itself and still a mother because regardless of how people may look at me or like oh she still do this that and the third but she's a mom like it don't matter regardless of what I do yes do you need to have discernment of what you should and should not be doing as a parent not just as a mom as a parent that means it doesn't matter if it's a mother or a father but should you have discernment of what you should and should not be doing yes yes um but I do not agree with the fact of that it's okay for a father to do certain things, but not a mother. Or even if it doesn't come to someone that has kids or involving kids, that it's okay for a woman, I mean, for a man to do something, but not a woman. For example, the only person that I have really seen that they make a lot of fuss about having a lot of kids is people like, on social media, I mean, is people like Nick Cannon or NBA Young Boy, things like that. But I do feel like that when it comes down to rappers or people that's in the entertainment industry or even not in the entertainment industry, just everyday life, I feel like it is acceptable. And I put up quotation marks of acceptable because it really shouldn't matter whether it's a man or a woman. But I feel like it's more acceptable for a man to have multiple baby mamas and multiple kids versus a woman having multiple baby daddies and multiple kids. It's looked at, I I don't feel like the same judgment is given. And I feel like on both ends, it's not right. Now, when I say it's not right, I know y'all like, well, Yvette, you got multiple baby daddies and multiple kids. Okay, yeah, it's not right. I don't agree with the actions that I have made. But those were poor decisions that I made. It doesn't matter that I'm a woman. Just as a person, those were poor decisions. Should I sit here and feel regret about it the kids are already here I can't take them back you know what I'm saying I can't drop them off somewhere I mean I could but I'm not but it's like I'm not gonna do that so it's no point in sitting here being in misery about it but I feel like that when it comes down to a man doing it versus a woman it's completely different it's completely different even when it comes down to um Let's just say, for instance, outside of the kids, let's say, for instance, you're in a relationship. How many times do we hear of where a man can cheat and cheat and cheat and cheat and do this and be disrespectful and do this, that and a third. But when it comes down to a woman cheating or a woman doing something to where they're fed up and they're not taking it anymore, a man can't take it. I have literally heard somebody come out their mouth and somebody that has cheated several times on their partner they came out their mouth and said if this person was to cheat on me meaning if the girl was to cheat on me I would be ready to kill her 
And even though I know they're literally not saying, like, kill her, you know how you might be like, oh, I'm going to kill you. Like, why would you do that? You know what I'm saying? It's figuratively speaking, hopefully, because some people out here are just crazy. But it's just, to me, it's just crazy how it's okay for a man to do something, but when it comes down to a woman, all hell is going to break loose. And that's not right. That is not right. I don't feel like a man feelings is more, why do you feel like that is to the point where you can't handle something that you're doing to a woman? Like, do y'all not think that we have feelings? Do you not think that we're hurt about it? Do you not think that it's something that keeps us up at night or makes us wonder like where, you know, like why, why would you do this? Or something that we constantly think about in our mind? Because as a woman, I'm here to tell you that, yes, we are more prone to accept things that a man do to us versus what we do to a man. I definitely agree with, I feel like we, we are more acceptable to taking a man back after he cheats on us versus a man taking us back after we cheat on them. But as a woman that has been cheated on multiple times, let me tell you, the emotion, and, and, and definitely this is something that I did not have to deal with. As soon as I found out that a person cheated, I could have left and not looked back. But I'm just talking about emotion-wise, the way that it affects a woman emotionally. Me, personally, I'm sitting here thinking, like, oh, my goodness, like, how could you do this? Like, you let this woman touch you, this woman, and this, that, and the third. This woman had this type of access to you. You said these things to this woman. You allow this woman to be able to say that you did these things to her. I'm sitting here checking call logs after call logs after call logs. Like, it's a part-time job at this point, popping up. Checking location, checking bank transactions. I'll never forget. <laughs> Check the bank transaction to see where the last place that somebody swiped their card just to pop up on them. Like this, this, this is this is a mental toll. And I'm just speaking about the fact of how it makes us feel. I'm not saying that it's right for a woman to deal with it or a woman should have to put up with it or a woman should take a man back. No, I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying that what makes you think that it's okay for you to keep doing this to a woman and then when a woman does it to you, you now the world about to end. Now you feeling like, how could she do this to me? How could she allow somebody in between her legs? How could she give attention to another man? And the first thing that a man will say that I've heard a man say is, it's different when a woman do it. It's not the same when a man do it. As in... A man can do it and not have any feelings attached, but if, if a woman was to cheat, feelings would be attached. And, you know, I agree with that to a certain point. I definitely do. I definitely feel like that a man can do certain things and feelings not there. They can tell a woman, I'm going to buy you a house. I'm going to marry you. We're going to have kids. We're going to do this, that, and the third and don't mean a lick of it. Yet, Do I believe a man can do that? Yes. Hell yeah. But does it make it right? No. So it doesn't give an excuse of saying, oh, it's okay for a man to do this, but a woman can't. Going back to when it comes down to mother and father roles, I feel like just off of social media from what I see, or not even on social media, just even in life of where you see like of a mother and father is not together, most of the time you see the kids with the mother. And any time that the kids or child is with the father or the, the father is taking the main role as a parent is looked at as like neglect on the mother end. Like even with me, like for example, my, my son's father has even said that he wanted his, you know, my son to come live with him. And I'm like, hell no. But why? why honestly like you know I have my reasons for certain things but I'm just saying like at the end of the day why not but it's honestly because I feel like if I was to allow my child to go live with his dad versus living with me I would feel like a neglectful mom but why is that why do we live in a world that makes us feel like that it's okay for a dad to not have as much responsibility because he's a man but when it comes down to a woman, it's not okay. And, you know, I just, like, even with me having twins, a boy and a girl, they are one years old. And I see how 
Kehlani automatically takes the role of like looking after her brother, taking care of her brother, making sure he's okay. If I tell him to do something, she's doing it for him. And it makes me think like, man, this little girl is one. And she's already picking up these roles without even being taught that this is something that she's supposed to do. So it makes me really think about the fact of that one, I feel like women are naturally nurturers. And I feel like that with us naturally being nurturers, it kind of um, hurts us kind of in a way. We're naturally nurturers. So we feel like that we have to take the lead on certain things because we feel like it's not a man job. Even when it comes down to having kids, right? When I had the twins, my job allowed me to be off for 90 days. The twins dad job, he wasn't able to get any time off for paternal leave. And I know that there are some jobs that do give paternal paternity leave because my job does, but it's not a lot of jobs that allows allow that and to me that's so weird because that makes it like that right there shows that it's expected for a woman after pushing out a baby almost dying possibly still sore possibly having to get sewn up and it don't and if she have a c-section that's even worse you know us being in pain trying to get back to our normal selves and we still have to take care of a baby and a man is not given the opportunity to have time off for work specifically for paternity leave to sit there and help. This man didn't have to push out nothing. This man didn't even have to carry a baby at all. But yet when it comes down to having a baby, it's natural for a woman to be able to have that leave because why we're the one carrying the baby we're the one pushing the baby out so of course we have to heal and take care of the baby the baby can't take care of itself most of the time when it comes down to daycare daycare is not accepting babies until six weeks so it's natural for a job well you're not it's mandatory for a job to allow you to have maternity leave but it's not mandatory for a job for you to have paternity leave and why is that why <laughs> why and it all all of these thoughts stem from that one statement it's okay when they do it but it's a problem when you do it you know what i'm saying and and it's just y'all i could go on and on for days honey because i really feel like that we live in a world where women are expected to be so strong we are expected to do it all we are expected to always hold it together and if it comes down to um, us not being with the father of our child anymore. We have more responsibility that we have to do. Like, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. And I do not agree with it at all. At all. And honestly, I don't feel like that it will ever change. But I feel like, I feel like us as women, I feel like we do need to start putting more responsibility on a man. Um, for example, when I had the twins, like naturally I wanted to take the lead on a lot. It wasn't until I actually, like they were six months old and that's when I had my first breakdown where I just was like, I'm just tired. I can't do this. Like this is just too much. And I'm not saying anything bad about their dad at all because he's definitely present. But I just feel like naturally sometimes when it comes down to being a man, I feel like that men are supposed to be looked at as masculine and a woman feminine. But honestly, us having to go into these roles of where we have to take the lead on a lot of things, it makes us more masculine. And then we have men nowadays that complain about a woman being too masculine and things like that. And do I feel like that that is a problem? Yes. I feel like that there should be a balance, but these are the reasons why that we are too masculine. If you feel like that, you constantly have to keep taking a lead on certain things. Are you not going to feel masculine as a woman? And I feel like it's important for both sexes to have a balance of masculinity and femininity. <laughs> but I just feel like sometimes 
when it comes down to a woman, when you're leaning too much on your masculine side, it's looked at as a problem. But nowadays, the times have changed. I was watching this movie called Fences with Viola Davis and Denzel Washington. I'm not sure if any of you all have watched it, but, you know, it pretty much to give a summary of the story. He was a uh, he he drove trash trucks and he was going to work every day when he would get paid. He would come and put his money right on the counter and she would do whatever needs to be done with the money. Right. She didn't have to work. She was just at home taking care of the kids, making sure he was fed, making sure the house was clean. That was her job. She was a stay at home mom. He was cheating on her. Got somebody else pregnant. When he got that person pregnant, he told his wife, which was Viola Davis, and asked her to help him take care of the baby um, because the, the, the mother of the baby, the side baby, ended up passing away during birth, right? So he asked her to take care of the baby, and Viola Davis, I forgot her name in the movie. I, I hate to keep saying Viola Davis because it's not Viola Davis. It's another character. Because Viola Davis probably like, hell no. But he asked her to help. And she was like, it's not the baby's fault that the baby doesn't have a mom. But you are a womanless man. Meaning that she was not going to continue to, you know, engage in having sex with him. Acting like a wife to him. But she was going to take care of that baby. And, you know, she still, at the end of the day, they still was in the same household. Still laying in the same bed. Still acting as husband and wife as far as taking care of responsibilities but they just weren't it wasn't the romantic part back then those are the things that was going on men was out here doing whatever that they were doing and the woman was at home taking care of the household and the kids and even now when it comes down to centuries down the line here we are in the same situation of where men be out here doing whatever they're gonna do and the woman is at home taking care of the kids but along with taking their care of the kids because of the times that we live in to where majority of the time you don't have it to where a man could just work by himself and take care of the whole household now you have women working so we're working taking care of the kids trying to be you know a boss woman doing all of these things and we have men out here still cheating not giving us the respect that we we deserve not taking care of us as we should be taken care of and then y'all expect for us not to be masculine how how are we not going to be masculine maybe we wouldn't and unfortunately when it come down to you know it shouldn't all revolve around money which i don't feel like that it does all revolve around money but back then a man was out there working taking care of the household making the money and then coming home and just giving his whole paycheck and everything was taken care of and unfortunately i do feel like that that is a bad way of looking at it as to where just as long as you come home and bring me your whole paycheck you taking care of the household because i feel like it goes way further than that way further than that like are you the head of the household if kids are involved are you being a leader for them are you being a male figure for them because those things are important and you know even in that movie his son ended up resenting him because his son hated how for one his dad treated him his dad didn't care about spending time with his son or being a loving father figure to his son he even told his son I don't have to like you. Who said I got to like you? And that is a problem within itself, you know? So it's like, it goes much more than somebody just going out there and making the money and paying the bills. Like, no, that's not enough. You know, I feel like when it comes down to being a provider and being the man of a household, it goes so much further than that. But nowadays, I feel like women are taking more of the lead on a lot of things because now we live in a time where women aren't scared to leave. We're not just staying with somebody just because it's back 1930, 1920, whatever, or 19. I feel like I'm saying the wrong numbers. But <laughs> what back in the day, you know, we would get cheated on. And a man would be out here doing them, even having babies on us, and we would still stay with that person. Nowadays, am I saying that a woman just leave the first time a man does something? No. But I feel like women aren't dealing with what we were dealing with back in the day, so it's looked at differently. Yes, our masculine side is going to come out more. That's just inevitable. 
we're sitting here dealing with this bull crap that y'all doing so i just feel like that it's just not okay for i just i don't know what it can be to change the narrative on this and i don't know if i just honestly i'm still in a place you guys of where i'm just trying to figure out how it should be and i'm telling you because I, in my mind i i felt like i knew how it would how it should be but now that i have one-year-old boy and girl and the girl is just so nurturing and want to take care of him and he's just you know like he bump his head she's going to rub his head you know and if I tell him to do something, she hurry up and do it before he can do it. And, you know, he she just looks after him. You, if he hurt, the other day he hurt himself, she was crying and crying and crying. And, and you know, his dad picked him up and was consoling him. And she laid out on the ground because she was so hurt at the fact that she could not get to him. And do I think it's more of like, do I think anything has to do with the fact that they're siblings and they're twins? Yes. But I also feel like, you know, he doesn't do that to her. And it could be just because their personality, but I just feel like naturally women are nurturers. And naturally, I feel like women are even now to the point where if her dad fusses at her, I can pick her up and he could put his hands out for her and she'll still go to him. So it's like it just makes me realize that is this engraved in us? Is it engraved in us women to where a man can hurt us? And we still go back to them. Or a man can do this, that, and the third. And we'll be hurt. But we just don't allow that to break up the relationship all the time. Um, do I feel like that self-worth and loving yourself have a big part to play in it? Yes. But I also feel like that even if it came down to you feeling like you could forgive somebody for cheating on you or doing something outside of your relationship, I feel like a woman is willing to accept that more than a man is. And I also feel like that men are more prone to go out here and cheat versus a woman. Do I feel like that there's women out here that will cheat? Yes, I know there is. But do we hear about men cheating more? Yes. <laughs> so... I don't know, y'all. I don't know. This wasn't necessarily a conversation of where <sighs> I'm giving advice or anything like that. I'm just giving my opinion, and I'm also pondering a question. Why is it okay for a man to do something, as in cheating, having multiple kids, multiple baby daddies, I mean, Lord, multiple baby mamas, <laughs> But when it comes down to a woman doing it, it is looked at as bad. It is looked at as bad. I'm going to give y'all a couple of examples. Offset and Cardi B. Offset has two children, right? I mean, no. Cardi B has two children with Offset. They're married. They have two children together. I don't even know how many other kids Offset has. Let me Let me look it up. Hold on. Offset has five kids, right? So that's three outside of Cardi B. So many interviews I have heard people ask Cardi B about how she does this, that, and the third and still be a mom. How was she still working and still being a mom and being pregnant? But I don't hear those questions when it comes down to somebody talking to Offset about it. And somebody might be listening to this podcast and be like, who is these people? But... That is just an example of how when it comes down to a mother, I even see people on Twitter telling young Miami slash Carisha out off the city girls that she need to go home and be a mom. You need to go home and be a mom to your kids. You always out. You always traveling this, that, and the third. But I guarantee they are not saying that to the person that she has kids with. So I just feel like what is the problem with the woman I feel like on both ends, it's important for both parents to be present in their children's lives. But what is it? A, why is it a problem for a woman to still be out here living her life, still out here hustling, still out here working, working while she's pregnant or doing these other? If you want to have a soft life, that that's fine. If that's the life that you want to live, 
perfect. But me, for example, when it comes down to being a mom, I will be a mom to my kids, but I'm still going to go out. I'm still going to have my fun. I'm still going to have a drink. I'm still going to get my hair done. I'm still going to get my nails done. I'm still going to dance. I'm still going to be young and might wear revealing clothes from time to time being where I'm going. I'm still going to wear tight fitted clothes. I'm still going to, you know what I'm saying? Until I feel like deep down in my soul is being told to me to stop doing these things because I want to do it. Not because of what society is saying, because I want to do it. I'm going to do it. And there's nothing that nobody out there can say, like, oh, she doing this and she got kids, this, 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 this. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. The whole point of my podcast, and still a mother. I'm still going to do everything that I love to do and still be a mother. Because when it comes down to these dads, they can do this, that, and the third, and they're never questioned. Never. They could go to work every day. Every day. I feel like they would not get asked a lot of times, well, where are your kids? Who has your kids? You know why? Because people will automatically assume that the kids are with the mother. But when it comes down to a woman, this is not the privilege that we have. So, you know, I know I got hype, you guys, but that is something that I'm really passionate about because I am a young mother. I'm 29. If you think that I am not going to still live my life on the account of that I have kids, you have another thing coming. I don't care. I'm still going to live my life. Do kids stop me from doing certain things that I want to do or put a hindrance on it to a certain extent? Of course. Of course they do because they still need your attention. You still need to be present. They still need that quality time. They still need you as a mom, but they also need their dad. That is why it's more looked at as there are more deadbeats, deadbeat dads than there are deadbeat moms. I know there are some deadbeat moms out there, but we all know that there are more deadbeat deadbeat dads. And I feel like that's because, for one, a woman has to carry their children for nine months or however long they carry the child, push them out. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, I feel like naturally we have some type of more attachment to this child because we carry this child. And I'm victim of that, too. I'm victim of that, too. Like, when it comes down to the twins, I can do something with them as far as taking them somewhere or letting somebody watch them or this, that, and the third And, you know, their dad won't ever question me because he knows that I'm never going to put them in harm's way or I'm going to always have their best interest at heart. But when it comes down to him, he always like, you good with such and such watching them or you good with me? You know what I'm saying? And it's not that he has to ask, but I just feel like naturally when it comes down to a man, it's like, you know, it's like it's just something about a mom carrying their babies. Like, (sighs) I don't know. I don't know. But it doesn't make it right at all, you know? So I'm just, I'm interested in having a conversation, not a, not a argument, just having a conversation on how you guys feel about it. Because I really feel like that, you know, we do live in a world where it's okay for a man to do certain things, but it's not okay for a woman. And I do not agree with that. I feel like that a woman can definitely live her best life and still be a mother along with a dad living their best life and still be a father. But it's important for both parties to be present. It's important for both parties to have an influence on the kids because that's important. That is important. It's very important. Um, And I, you know, do I feel like that there's something as far as genetic wise that plays a factor in that? Yes. Like clearly there is because it's no reason why Kehlani and her one year old little self feels like that she has to nurture her little brother. Well, not even her little brother, but her twin brother, you know, and it just comes naturally for her. You know, I didn't teach her to do these things because I'm going to teach my baby like, listen, honey, don't be taking care of these men. Let them take care of you. (laughs) But, you know, now I'm just playing. Like, I don't want nobody. Nobody's going to be taking care of my baby. Like, if you want to do for her, then yeah, but she's going to be taught to have her own. But, I just wonder, like, why? Like, why is it that way? Why? And then if it is that way, if it's supposed to be that way, where it's just like we are naturally nurturers, it's like 
why do these men just not appreciate that and not step out or appreciate what they have? Because like, for example, you have Shaq. Shaq, in interview that any interview that he does when they talk about Shani, he says that he was a cheater. He did not appreciate her. Now he live in this big old house by himself and he is miserable because like he messed up that from cheating. But if, if she was all of these things to you, why, why? This is a question for my men. Why? I just want to know why, why? If you see that a woman is everything that you want in a person, why? Why? And I'm going to leave it as that. As y'all know, my last segment is the where I tell y'all a book that I have been reading and let y'all, well, read y'all a passage of where that relates to this episode. But honestly, you guys, the book that I'm reading, it does not relate to this episode at all. So I'll just tell you guys what I'm reading. I'm reading this book called Inner glimpse inner glimpse and the author is i want to say is ideal ahmad hold on yeah inner glimpse by ideal ahmad and this book is good for anybody that is you know just interested in like manifesting and things like that i know everybody saying manifest 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 but it gives you the title within itself, Inner Glimpse, it pretty much is teaching you how to listen to your inner being to get to where you want to be at in life. So that's the book that I'm currently reading. After this book, I will probably read. Well, I don't know. I got to figure out. But after this book, I, I do want to um, get a book that from Eric Thomas is called U-O-U, U-O-U, like Y-O-U. <laughs> and then O-W-E, and then Y-O-U. So that's the next book that I'm probably going to read. If not, I am going to get the book because I want to read it. And, yeah. So that's it for this episode, you guys. Don't forget to watch visually on YouTube. If you are not, the YouTube is All Things Yvette. The visual will be uploaded every Friday. So that's it, y'all. And I will see you guys next Friday. Bye! Oh, 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 o